Moving on to the migrant crisis now, and Hungary has just finished the first phase of a barbed wire fence along the border with Croatia to stem the flow of migrants. It comes as Croatia struggles to handle the influx. The Prime Minister says his country will now let people pass through to Western Europe. Many are coming from Serbia after Hungary shut its border there. Hungarian authorities are now accusing Croatia of helping migrants illegally cross into Hungary. Our Ben Wiedemann has been on the trail with the refugees. He filed this report from the Hungarian-Croatian border. She barely made it to the front of the line for the bus, whimpering, enough, enough. This, this woman from Syria, overcome by exhaustion from a journey that paused in the Croatian border village of Tovarnik. We never imagined this trip would be so hard, says Samir from Damascus. We thought after all we've already suffered, they would welcome us differently than this. Thousands flocked here from Serbia after Hungary slammed shut its border. Yet another night in the rough, this tiny hamlet's population suddenly swelled by thousands. Yet again, the tired, the desperate, the destitute from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan and beyond, stranded and waiting for a solution. This is a real disaster on Europe's doorstep and the European Union is doing very little to resolve it. We just see thousands and thousands of people on the move every day. Wherever they get blocked, they end up in a similar situation like this. Buses eventually arrived, but few knew where they would be taken. Confusion reigned. Amal from Damascus fainted from the heat and then discovered her six-year-old son had boarded one of the buses and left without her. Police told me everyone would be bused to a nearby city. But hours later, many of the buses ended up here, on the Croatian-Hungarian border crossing at Beremend. The Croatian government, overwhelmed and floundering in the flood, was passing them on to Hungary, which, in a bizarre twist, agreed to take them in. Just to underscore the absurdity of this seemingly endless odyssey, some of these people 48 hours ago were throwing rocks and clashing with Hungarian riot police on the Hungarian-Serbian border. Two days later, we see Hungarian police herding them onto buses into Hungary. Adults weighed down with exhaustion, children dazed and babies crying. They boarded for the next stop, final destination unknown. Senior international correspondent Ben Wiedemann joins us now on the phone. He's en route to Budapest, Hungary. And ben, you've witnessed so many migrants, tired, exhausted, and pretty much left to the whim of whatever governments decide on any given day. There must be uh, some relief in Croatia now where migrants are being allowed to pass through there. Well, there's relief, but it's only slight relief because... The problem is that they don't know if they're going to get where they really want to go, which is uh, the countries in northern uh, Europe. Many are now being sent to reception centers in Hungary near the Austrian border. Uh, but they're very concerned about how they're going to be treated uh, in a legal manner. They want to make sure that, for instance, they're not registered as requesting asylum in Hungary because that, according to the Dublin Agreement, would compel them to stay at least for some time in Hungary itself. And at the moment, there's this bizarre war of words going on between Hungary and Croatia, uh, which further complicates this situation. And in fact, as we were driving away from the Hungarian border with Croatia earlier today, we saw uh, three armored personnel carriers and some troop transports heading uh, down there as well. So that may further complicate an already very complicated situation, Linda. And the German Vice Chancellor spoke uh, a short time ago again pleading for other countries to share the burden of the migrant crisis, but it seems those pleas seem to be falling on deaf ears. Yes, because uh, so many countries, Germany, Austria and others, uh, less, less well off than those two countries, uh, say they've reached their capacity in terms of receiving uh, migrants. Now, uh, you know, we heard the Hungarians, for instance, this morning suggesting that there be some sort of 
your EU force on the border between Turkey and Greece to try to impose some sort of control on the flow of migrants and refugees into the EU. But of course, there's so many proposals that have, nobody has been able to agree, agree upon at this point. So European officials and leaders continue to flounder for a solution, but they haven't found anything yet. And in, your, and in your time uh, when you were just uh, on that border, did you see many aid groups working alongside the authorities? There's a few. There was the Hungarian Red Cross handing out water and snacks uh, to the people. And we also saw the UNHCR was there. Uh, but uh, an official from the UNHCR complained to me that Hungarian author officials on the scene were not providing any information in terms of what they were going to do with the refugees and migrants who had left Croatia and entered Hungary. They were being loaded on to buses, but uh, no information was being shared as to where they would be going next. And of course, the problem is that you know, well-meaning local and European aid groups are trying to provide food, provide water, provide clothing, whatever they can uh, to this mass of people. But they move from one spot to another. So what we've seen time and time again is that when these groups finally get their act together and are set up to provide medical care and whatnot, the refugees have moved on. So it's a constantly uh, sort of moving a crisis which everyone, including these aid groups, find very hard to get there and provide what they they what is so desperately needed by the refugees and migrants. Yeah, you know? such a complicated, very messy situation. Ben Wiedemann, thanks for your reporting. Uh, en route to Budapest, we appreciate it. Observers say a majority of those refugees are fleeing Syria's bloody civil war. To date, millions of Syrians have sought refuge in other countries. The majority have settled in Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon and Iraq. If you look at the numbers, more than 4 million Syrians are now in those four countries, while almost twice as many are displaced inside Syria. There are also some 428,000 Syrians seeking asylum in Europe.